This module covers the power wheelchair benefits provided by AADO. Alberta Aids to Daily Living will be referred to as AADL in this module. AADL provides funding to Albertans with chronic conditions for power wheelchairs for basic mobility needs that cannot be met with any other equipment or support. This funding is for clients with complex needs and can be authorized by occupational therapists or physiotherapists who have competency in assessing and prescribing power mobility. This module will provide you with an overview of power wheelchair benefits, review authorizer and vendor qualifications, and outline the assessment and authorization process. We will also discuss the approved product list and ownership and maintenance of AADL power wheelchairs. AADL provides funding for power wheelchairs for both adults and children using a recycle model. AADL retains full ownership of all AADL funded power wheelchairs and when a wheelchair is no longer required by a client, it is returned to the recycle inventory. When a new client requires a power wheelchair, the recycle inventory is checked to find a matching power wheelchair first before purchasing new. Recycled power wheelchairs are cleaned and refurbished before being provided. Power wheelchairs on the AADL program can accommodate specialized seating and controls with or without tilt and recline. Some items such as specialty controls have a maximum cap on funding and are considered owned by the client. These options are described in the approved product list. Note that when authorizing a power wheelchair, collaboration with a seating clinic or team may be needed as you will often require additional seating components since Albertans who show need for power wheelchairs often have complex mobility needs. We'll now talk about power wheelchair authorizer qualifications in more detail. An authorizer of power wheelchair benefits must be an occupational therapist or physical therapist licensed to practice in Alberta and must also already be an AADL authorizer. The first step to have power wheelchair benefits added to your product ranges is to obtain a minimum manual wheelchairs level A seating product range. You will need to complete additional training and education in seating assessments to obtain level A, B, or C seating product ranges. Once you have the additional seating product ranges, you need to have a minimum of one year experience authorizing manual wheelchairs. During this time, if you are interested in authorizing power wheelchairs, you will need to gain knowledge regarding mobility devices through attendance at manufacturer in services on power mobility. Any opportunity to mentor with a current power wheelchair authorizer should be taken. You may also gain additional knowledge about power wheelchairs through AADL power wheelchair vendors. We'll now look at vendor qualifications. AADL power wheelchair vendors must pass a vendor facility inspection and obtain an agreement with AADL to provide power wheelchair services. In order to provide power wheelchair services, the vendor must have a head technician on site with certificates for each power wheelchair manufacturer the vendor deals with. The vendor has to have an agreement with each manufacturer in order to sell and service their products. You can find which manufacturer each vendor deals with on the approved vendor list. The recycle vendor has a separate contract with AADL to provide recycle services, including maintaining the recycle inventory, accepting and picking up all AADL owned equipment from clients who no longer need them and providing recycled chairs to new clients. We'll now look at the assessment process and eligibility requirements for power mobility. The first step in assessing a client for an AADL power wheelchair is to make sure they are eligible for AADL funding. 
You will need to ask questions such as, are you eligible for funding from the Workers' Compensation Board, non-insured health benefits, Veterans Affairs, or other funding bodies? If so, they are not eligible for AADL funding. Once they have met general eligibility, you will need to complete an assessment to determine what model and options they require. During the assessment, you will need to assess their suitability for power and their functional and positioning needs. The power chair must be trialed with the client's preferred vendor to ensure the client is competent at driving it and it is appropriate for the environment. The power mobility application form must be completed in addition to your seating assessment. The application form and power and tilt space request form provides AADL with eligibility information. Let's look at the assessment for power wheelchairs process in more detail, beginning with assessing a client's eligibility. Approvals for power wheelchairs are based on multiple eligibility factors. As a general rule, AADL funded power mobility is intended to address clients with very high needs. The most important criteria for power wheelchair benefits is that the client must require power mobility full time. The power wheelchair must be the only type of mobility device they can use to independently move within their home and community. The client must not be able to functionally walk or move in a manual wheelchair. If your client is able to move in a manual wheelchair, even if it is just within their home or residence, a scooter or basic captain style power wheelchair may be all they need. However, these are not funded by AADL and the authorizer should assist these clients in pursuing alternate funding resources. If your client has passed the physical criteria questions, you can proceed with finding out if the client meets the rest of the criteria around their environment, supports, and level of activity. Your client must live in a fully accessible environment to get a power wheelchair through AADL. They must also have a high level of engagement in productive social and leisure activities in the community. Funding would not be approved if your client lives in a congregate living site where they could get support staff to help push a manual wheelchair. However, funding may be approved if your client has an active lifestyle and there is considerable limited access to caregivers or support staff. Sitting tolerance must be at least six consecutive hours. Clients who have accessed funding for a home care bed, lower limb prosthetics or category B, C or D wheelchair through AADL may not be eligible due to conflicting eligibility criteria. If a client has lower limb prosthetics, they would not be eligible for a power wheelchair through AADL as prosthetics are meant to enable the client to walk. In the Power Wheelchair Policies and Procedures Manual available on the AADL and Alberta Blue Cross websites, there is a chart that provides a brief overview of eligibility for a power wheelchair. Please refer to it when you are considering completing a power wheelchair application for one of your clients. This table may be updated from time to time, so it is best to refer to the website for the latest version. AADL provides funding support for several power wheelchair options and each has its own criteria. When an adult client requires tilt and space on their power wheelchair, you will complete the Power Adult Tilt and Space form available on the AADL and Alberta Blue Cross websites. If your client is borderline and you know they will require one within the next year or two, it is best to request it with the base as it is more cost effective for AADL. In these cases, you would provide the rationale directly on the tilt and space form. If the client will likely not need one for longer than a year or so, make sure you authorize a power wheelchair that can be retrofit with the tilt option just in case you need to request the tilt component in the future. Specialty controls include head arrays, MEC joysticks, chin controls, rim controls, sip and puff controls, and switch drives. 
Clients using a speech-generating communication device are eligible for a Bluetooth-capable joystick. AADL provides a maximum funding amount for specialty controls. Clients are responsible for costs above the maximum. The maximum price includes costs associated with the display, mounting hardware, and installation. Specialty controls are considered owned by the client and repairs are the client's responsibility. There are functional considerations when assessing for power mobility. This includes the ability of the client to operate power controls and the ability to adjust weight independently. There are various options for power controls to enable the client to operate the wheelchair independently. Factors such as their capacity to learn and be trained on how to operate these controls must be assessed. Pediatric clients must have the potential to learn and be given time and the opportunity to learn. Once they reach adulthood, however, they must meet all the adult criteria. The tilt and space option is provided for clients who require it right away or who have progressive conditions. As mentioned earlier, progression of the client's condition should be considered in case they may require a retrofit tilt and space in the future. Factors that support the need for recline include a compromised respiratory system or feeding and swallowing concerns. When considering tilt and space, some factors include the inability to maintain an upright position of the head or trunk, the inability to weight shift independently, a reduced seating tolerance due to fatigue, a history of pressure wounds and impaired sensation, and an increased independence in basic activities of daily living. Clients must trial the power wheelchair before requesting funding to cover one. The trial must consist of two wheelchairs with the same drive configuration from two separate manufacturers. The authorizer must participate in the trial and have the client try it out for a minimum of 24 hours. The wheelchair needs to be trialed in the areas the client plans to access within the community to prevent issues with accessibility. This includes home, work, and or school. The wheelchair should be able to go through doorways, be transported in the client's vehicle, or mode of transportation. If the client has a wheelchair lift, the platform needs to accommodate the wheelchair footprint. The Power Wheelchair Approved Product List provides information on the Power Wheelchair models funded by AADL. The Approved Product List includes information on each model's manufacturer, weight capacity, sizes, front, mid, or rear wheel drive, eligibility criteria, and clinical rationale requirements. The list is updated annually and is available on the Alberta Blue Cross and AADL websites. If a power wheelchair model is not on the approved product list, it will not be funded by AADL. Not all options on power wheelchairs are funded. For example, multiple color options are not permitted on recycle wheelchairs and will not be funded. Basic black or blue are provided to help with replacing parts when recycling. A pediatric power tilt or recline, an elevating seat option, power elevating leg rests or foot platforms are not funded by AADL. Clients will need to pursue private or alternate funding for these. The full list of excluded items are found in the Power Wheelchair Policies and Procedures Manual. As mentioned earlier, basic power wheelchairs with captain-style seats and scooters are not on the approved product lists and are not funded by AADL. Repairs on specialty controls, elevating seats, or other options considered upgrades or funded privately are not covered by AADL. AADL does provide funding for drive controls such as joysticks and basic switch drives. 
More complex or specialty drive controls are funded through a grant model. The maximum funding for specialty drive controls is $4,000 and clients are responsible for any repairs and maintenance. Once you are confident your client meets the eligibility requirements for a power wheelchair, you can complete the application and authorization process. The authorization process includes the assessment, the trial, completing the manufacturer's specification form, discussing the costs with the client, completing the application, authorization, and obtaining your client's consent to proceed. You would then submit the authorization on the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal for adjudication. We will now review these steps in more detail. Generally, the seating assessment along with the AADL Power Mobility Application Form and AADL Adult Power and Tilt Space Request Form will assist the therapist in determining if the client meets the eligibility criteria for power mobility with or without the tilt option. The mobility manager prior approves power wheelchair application packages that meet AADL Power Mobility criteria. Forms are available online at the address on the slide. When a decision is made, Alberta Blue Cross will send an email to the authorizer with a reference number to see the results on the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal. Please ensure you complete all sections of the Power Mobility Application Form. Applications with blank or incomplete sections will be returned to the authorizer. Let's take a closer look at each page of the form. On page one, AADL looks for confirmation that the client's condition is stable. If a client currently has an AADL power wheelchair, their current wheelchair should have been evaluated and deemed not cost effective to repair. If this is the case, the vendor should have already submitted information on the client's power wheelchair and AADL will have directed the vendor to request the authorizer reassess the client for a new power wheelchair. If this has not been done yet, the client will not be eligible and the authorizer should wait until this step has been completed. If the client has a privately owned wheelchair, this should be noted as this supports the client's ability to operate a power wheelchair. On the second page of the application, the fact that the equipment trial was at least 24 hours is confirmed. The client capacity section confirms the client is able to operate a power wheelchair safely and the power wheelchair selected will accommodate the client's condition if any changes are expected. The client may require specialized drive controls. Basic joysticks and switches are provided. If more complex controls are required, a therapist specialized in seating may need to be involved. This is where information on the client's ability to walk or propel a manual wheelchair within their home is found and is critical for determining eligibility. If you check off no on any of these questions, you must provide more information in the comments or the application will be returned. For example, if the client has extreme difficulty in propelling a manual wheelchair any distance, check off no and explain why. Page 3 confirms the client's seating tolerance to be at least 6 hours and that the power wheelchair will be used full time. Question 13 on page 3 confirms that the client has demonstrated that they are able to operate a power wheelchair safely from a physical and cognitive perspective. The cognitive assessment must be comprehensive and include perception, executive decision making, the ability to learn new skills, and memory. To indicate that the client is safe to operate the power wheelchair, the therapist must be able to support it if requested. If the cognitive assessment identifies impaired capacity, do not proceed with the application. Page 3 also confirms accessibility requirements are met. 
The information on the trial within the client's home and community environment confirms that the environment is accessible for all the areas used by the client. Measurements are still required in case a substitute power wheelchair is considered. Questions 17 and 18 provide confirmation that the healthcare provider and client have considered how to transport and care for the power wheelchair and ensures the client received information on all the features of the power wheelchair and understands how to care for them. AADL recommends authorizers work with the vendor to provide the client education on proper care and maintenance of the wheelchair. Questions on page 4 provide information on the level of activities both within the client's home environment and within the community. Clients that are working, volunteering, parenting, or going to school are considered to have higher needs. The answers on this page should reflect that the client requires a power wheelchair to manage their basic activities. The Daily Usage Plan assists AADL in determining how often the client uses a power wheelchair, how it is being used, and for what purpose. A description of the planned activities is useful here, along with time frames. Answers to these questions are important in helping AADL determine that power mobility is the only way the client can participate in these activities. On pages 4 and 5, questions 24 to 26, inform AADL that the power wheelchair will increase the client's ability to participate in activities independently. Question 27 and 28, confirm eligibility with other AADL funded equipment. And questions 29 and 30, look at lifestyle and opportunity to add any additional information. The final three pages of the application are for client, guardian, or trustee and authorizer signatures. These pages serve as declarations that the client or guardian or trustee understands what is being ordered, the rules around obtaining equipment from the AADL program, and that they are in agreement with what is being ordered. The authorizer is responsible for ensuring the client understands the declaration and understands that the application has to be prior approved. It is not automatically approved. Once the full power mobility application package is complete, it is uploaded with the authorization for power mobility to the Alberta Blue Cross online health portal by the authorizer. As a reminder, this package includes the power mobility application form, the manufacturer's specification forms, and the client declaration form. If the authorizer is requesting power tilt, this is a separate authorization and the tilt and space form is uploaded with that authorization. Once the package is received at AADL, it is placed in a queue for review. If approved, AADL will search the recycle inventory and will order the appropriate power wheelchair from the recycle vendor if there is one available or from the preferred client vendor if ordering new. Alberta Blue Cross will email the authorizer with a notice that the decision can be seen on reports on the online health portal. The authorizer then follows up directly with the vendor. The last section of this module discusses wheelchair ownership and maintaining power wheelchairs. AADL retains ownership of all power wheelchairs that it funds. Once a client no longer needs it, it must be returned to the AADL recycle vendor. This occurs even if it is considered beyond repair and in poor condition. Any government asset has to go through a surplus process and this is handled through our recycle vendor. All AADL clients are responsible for the proper care of their wheelchairs. It is expected that they make sure they look after regular maintenance and take it in for repairs as needed. Clients should also get the wheelchair added to their insurance policy as AADL does not replace lost, damaged, or stolen equipment. The client may have to pay the depreciated cost of the equipment in these instances. 
Requesting repairs for power wheelchairs do not require an authorization. The authorizer or client can contact the vendor directly for a repair. The authorizer contacts the vendor if reconfiguration or a parts change is required and provides the vendor with their authorization number, the equipment make and model, and changes requested. Clinical rationale for a parts change must be provided to the vendor to support the request. Only AADL approved vendors are permitted to repair or reconfigure AADL power wheelchairs. AADL provides up to $650 for repairs on a power wheelchair. In addition, one set of tires and batteries are funded annually. Repairs are subject to cost share rules and there is a 90-day warranty on new parts and labor from the date the repair or part was provided. AADL may determine that the costs of repairs are no longer cost effective and will advise the vendor to let the client or authorizer know it is time for a reassessment for a new power wheelchair. The client is expected to make arrangements for a reassessment. Replacements are not automatically approved. A power mobility application form must be submitted. The power chair is returned to the recycle vendor for surplus. For any questions related to power mobility, please contact the AADL Technical Specialist at the number listed on this slide. Thank you for reviewing the Power Wheelchair module of the AADL online training. Please note the date you have completed this module and listed on the authorizer application. Contact us if you have questions about the module content.